This is UNG Nighthawks All Access. And hello again, everyone. Craig Corbin, another episode of our season-long visit with student athletes, staff, and coaches all involved with UNG Athletics. Right here on Georgia Mountain Television, proud to be the newest affiliate partner of the Nighthawk Sports Network. And all season long, GMTV will air both live and replay coverage of Nighthawk Sports Network broadcasts of men's and women's soccer, men's and women's basketball, as well as baseball and softball. We've got a great show for you today, and uh, we'll be visiting with a member of the staff here at UNG, a stalwart member of the men's soccer program, and our first guest, the coach of tennis here at North Georgia, Kent Norsworthy. Coach? Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Appreciate it. It has been a while. A lot has transpired since the last time you and I sure. sat down. And congratulations are in order because it seems as though visits to the NCAA are becoming a very uh, regular occurrence now for UNG Tennis. Yeah, luck luckily it is. Um, yeah, two years in a row, the women's program. Uh, like I've said, both years we've just played the best tennis on the right weekend. and. If we're if that's going to happen, that's the weekend I want it to happen on. So we've we've been able to do that two years in a row. So pr pr pretty lucky, but a lot of hard work. Ladies worked really hard for both years, and uh, yeah, very happy with it. And hats off to the women making the elite eight. That is f a phenomenal accomplishment. Talk a little bit about that season and how it all culminated in making it that far. Yeah, I think that uh, the, the season before probably helped a lot. Um, I've always said that sometimes it takes a year or two of getting to a put, putting yourself in a situation before you can kind of break through. Not many teams kind of get there and win the first round the first year, or, you know, win a national championship only seeing that, that situation, that environment one time. So I think the year before really helped being out there and seeing those teams and competing against that level. Um, so yeah, la last year I felt like they, they they did the draw a little bit differently. They seeded a little bit differently, so we had a we had a little better first round draw. Um, they also seeded differently and put the number one team country and number number one team in the country at the three seed, which we ran into a little bit earlier than maybe we should have. Uh, so yeah, we ran in them in the, in the second round, but uh, but yeah, I think uh, I think the year before set us up for making the Elite Eight uh, last year. You talked about being able to play well at the right time. There's such a fine line between success, failure in any sport, but certainly with tennis, being that you have so many moving parts in a match. Talk about that dynamic. Yeah, the, the team dynamic in tennis is different than any other sport because it's so individual. You've got you know six players all trying to win their line for the team. So you need four points to, to take the match. So uh, th there's a little bit of, uh, we want them to be a little selfish, but we also want them to make sure that they, it's for the greater good. Sure. Um, so yeah, the environment's much different than a lot of other sports and uh, getting them to kind of buy into the team aspect is always uh, the, the first step, bringing a new player in. Uh, individual, you know, tennis and juniors is just parents take them to the tournament, they play, and they go home. Right. There's not a whole lot of, if I do this, somebody else benefits from it. So, uh, so yeah, getting them to buy into the team of, if I win my match, it's for the other person, uh, sometimes is, is a challenge their first year. And I think that's where the ladies have been the last couple of years, is they understand that part of it, and they've really bought into it. What an honor for a former player to come back to your alma mater as a coach and I know that had to be an interesting uh, process for you when that opportunity presented itself. Yeah, it was it was a different uh, it was a different opportunity, which I was I was very excited about. When we went NCAA, I actually got a call from the, the my coach when I was a, a senior here, and he said he said, you know, we're going NCAA. They want a full time coach. I can't really devote the time that I really need to. He said, are you interested? And I said. Absolutely. You know, that was it, it, it was one of those calls that you don't hesitate. You know, you don't think, oh, maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I should do this. It was just one of those calls. I said, when's the interview? Let, 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 let's go. Right. So um, the transition was tough um, because I had been away for only a few years. So I actually knew a couple of the players who were on the team. Uh, I was still I was a very young head coach. Uh, I didn't I didn't go through that uh, GA you know, position or be an assistant coach. So it was tough to get thrown in. It definitely took me a few years to understand where I needed to be as a coach and um, that sort of thing and to find my niche as a coach. 
Uh, but, you know, after doing this for so long, I feel very comfortable in the position that I am and the, the, the players seem to enjoy what we're doing. And that's uh, a lot of it is, is uh, that's a big part of it to me no is that they're enjoying their product because if they enjoy it, they're going to play better and be happy. And that's what we're here for. Well, congratulations on the success of the program. Uh, it has been a, a real treat to, to watch. Uh, the, the program develop over the years and uh, the success that you've enjoyed and part of what has become really the, um, the shiny example of a, uh, an athletic department within the conference, I think, uh, that has to also be something that you take personal pride in. Yes, the, this athletic department has grown and tripled and quadrupled. Um, even just recently, we've grown so much. But uh, I, I, I remember g coming into the Peach Belt and the first, the first few years, a few teams had a lot of success. And then I think we all sort of regressed a little bit because there's different rules, there's right. different standards, you know, all these things. So the recruiting rules changed and we all had to adapt to that. But if you look at our athletic program right now, from top to bottom in every sport, every coach has adapted and then some. So we have been successful on every court and field. Our GPAs are out of this world for an athletic department. Um, and that starts at the top with Lindsey Reeves, yep. uh, for sure, and it works his way down to every student athlete and every coach and assistant coach and GA. And it's just, it's an amazing experience. And, you know, I'll, I'll just kind of add this. People ask me, they say, oh, don't you want to move on and do this and do that? And I say, why? Why would you? I'm in a wonderful place with wonderful people, and it's, uh, the grass is not always greener, and I'm in a pretty green pasture right now. I think go. we all are. So, uh, so, yeah, it's exciting to be here right now. Always a great day to be a Nighthawk. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Coach Norsworthy, and we will continue on Nighthawk All Access in just a moment. Play and stay in Dahlonega, the heart of the North Georgia mountains. The UNG Bookstore is the one-stop shop where students can get anything they need for the classroom and fans can find everything they need to support the Nighthawks, from shirts and jackets to car decals and tailgating chairs. Gear up at the Nighthawks nest with officially licensed UNG merchandise. Be sure to shop in store to find the item of the week. Visit our stores in Dahlonega, Gainesville, Oconee, and Cumming. Or check us out online at ungbookstore.com. The UNG Bookstore is a proud sponsor of North Georgia Athletics. What's up, Nighthawk Nation? Welcome to another edition of Walking with Walker. We are here at the beautiful Chasta Golf Club. I'm here with University of North Georgia men's golfer Grant Crowell. He's a senior on the team. He's going to show us how to make birdie here on number two while we uh, get to know him. Grant, you ready to go? You got 150-ish here. Nine iron is what you're playing? A little little nine iron here. Uh, you play in the draw? You play in the fade? What's play a little cut off the left side of the green here. Okay, let's see it. Oh, that's well done. Got about six, seven, eight feet. All right, let's take it. Let's take that walk to the green. All right, North Georgia. Yep. Why did you choose UNG? Uh, first off, close to home. Uh, I'm from Athens, so only about an hour and 20 minutes uh, from from home to here. And you know, Tom Fowler, the coach here, uh, before Coach Worley came in, uh, recruited me, and I really liked him a lot. You not only are a member of the golf team here, you're also a uh, a big part of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. Yep. Talk about your role with that and what drove you to want to be a part in SAC. Yeah, um, so Coach Fowler asked me about it when uh, I was a freshman, if I was interested in it, um, you know, and it just kind of helps 
give students a voice, give student athletes a voice in, in legislation that's going on in the NCAA. And uh, you know, I always, I've always, since I was a little kid, wanted to be a leader. No matter if I was, you know, in junior league football or whatever, baseball, whatever I was playing, golf growing up, I always wanted to be a leader. Um, so that really intrigued me, and I'm, you know, happy to be part of it. All right, a little bit of a fun question here. What's your favorite professional football team? You know, I haven't. I've never really been a huge pro sports fan for, for some strange reason. Um, my dad went to the University of Florida, so I'm a huge Florida Gators fan, um, which has been tough growing up in Athens being a Florida <laughs> fan. But uh, you know, it, it's fun. I mean, it's just you know, dad raised me that way, and you know, it's, it had certainly hadn't been the easiest thing living in Athens. But uh, I'm a huge Florida fan. So all right, how about this? Your favorite food? Wow. Um, I would have to say fried chicken. Fried chicken and fried like chicken. mac and cheese would be uh, perfect. That sounds good, a nice little Sunday dinner. All right, yeah, here's your putter. I'm gonna go pull the pin for you. I'll take your nine iron, you can right. hold on to your. While, while I'm getting the pin, when you think of like something that you would wanna tell potential student athletes that are here at the University of North Georgia, that are thinking about, you know, just coming, even if they're not student athletes, what would you tell them is the best part of the university as a whole? Yeah, um, I mean, it's just a lot of fun to be here. You know, even though it is a smaller school, um, you know, I still really enjoy being here. It's a lot of fun being part of the Nighthawk Nation, and you know, it really, it, it's just, it's just fun to be. I mean, Delonica is a great small place to be in, especially if you're growing up in a bigger city. It's nice to kind of have a place that's a little bit calmer. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just, and, and the city's beautiful. I mean, looking around the mountains and stuff every day, you don't get tired of it. Six feet for birdie. If you, hey, yeah, six feet for birdie. How you feel? Good. Hopefully, hopefully we can knock it in. I'm gonna play it just outside the right here. And hopefully we can. Knock it in. All right. Show me how to make birdie. Just slid it by, but you know what? Hey, par par is not bad on this hole. That's right. Par is not bad. That's right. Grant, appreciate right. it, buddy. Absolutely. UNG Nighthawks All Access will be back right after this. McLean with Red Rooster Realty. Fall is right around the corner and it doesn't get any prettier than this. Have you been thinking about buying in Georgia's Lake and Mountain Paradise? Give me a call at 770-480-4777. Welcome back again to Nighthawk All Access. A big thanks to Coach Northworthy for uh, being our guest to kick off the show. And pleased now to have the face <laughs> of uh, more enthusiasm than anybody else in the department. <laughs> Without question, Bryn Seidenstricker, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Of course, Bryn, the Assistant Athletic Director for Student Services at UNG. And uh, one of the, the things that people don't know about the department is what goes on behind the scenes with student services. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, we've got 225 student athletes. And so part of what we do is ensure that academically and career development wise that our student athletes are getting the resources that they need. So they're students first, sure. obviously. And so we're just kind of a resource within the department that helps them get the support that they need academically and as they kind of figure out what's next for them as they graduate. And that's something that starts from day one when they come on campus because the, the academic responsibilities begin day one. Talk about that transition and how that can be a challenge for some athletes. <laughs> well, it actually starts before day one. Right. So um, during orientation over the summer, we try to meet all of our student athletes during that process. And actually even on their recruiting visits, um, we're always available to speak with them then. Um, but day one, it, I mean, High school is a big jump, and I think some of them don't realize that. They hear it, but and then it's kind of a little bit of a culture shock. And so on day one, they know who we are, they know where our office is located, and we touch base with all of our new student athletes, freshmen and transfers, during the first two weeks of school just to say hey so they know where we are and let them know kind of how we can help them along the way. Now when you talk about having more than 200 yeah. student athletes, that you're responsible for. That is a tremendous load with regard to time management. Talk about how you approach the responsibilities of your department. Well, I have to give a huge shout out to our coaches first. Our coaches and our assistant coaches and our graduate assistants, I mean, it's an all hands on deck 
type of situation and our faculty athletic representative Kelly Cricky. Um, so it's not just me, sure. which I'm super thankful for. Um, but our coaches are on it as well, so they're kind of hearing it from all ends, and it's a it's a case by case basis. So um, learning styles are different, backgrounds are different, and so. I just like to get to know our student athletes first. What makes them tick? How do they perceive feedback and criticism? And then we just kind of work from there. Um, what works for one student athlete may not always work for the next. And that's where our coaches really come in. So what are they seeing on the field? How do they learn on the field or, or on the court? Because those learning styles are the same. So if I've got one student athlete that's a, you know, a kinesthetic learner, I'm going to use that when we talk about academics. And so kind of seeing that correlation helps them um, just like you talk to your coach about feedback, you talk to your professors about feedback. And so we have some of those conversations. It's tremendously important to tailor the approach as opposed to a cookie cutter approach. Right, right, uh, definitely. <laughs> Curious about what would have led you to an interest in this pursuit uh, for a career. I know that, and we'll talk a little bit about it uh, in a moment with regard to your athletic background, but I'm curious about what led you toward this as a career. That's a great question. So um, I was a student athlete in college, and but I was always kind of a nerd. I loved school. Um, and so I have this, you know, earnestness to learn and always have. And so I loved being a student athlete. It was the best four years of my life, but um, there was something more to that. And so I kind of got hooked with the Student Athlete Advisory Committee and uh, learned about the behind the scenes of athletics and, and some of the opportunities that student athletes have off the field. And so that's kind of where it, where it started. And then I thought I wanted to coach. Um, both my parents were coaches and so I kind of had that itch. Um, but it was during that experience that I realized working with student athletes one-on-one, -on -one, um, I loved the on the field stuff, but it was the off the field stuff that I kind of felt like I got to know them a little bit more. and. Um, could help them with some of that off the field stuff. So it was a duty and a responsibility as a coach, but it was kind of like, oh, I can turn this into a career and step away from coaching, but still work really closely with our student athletes. And have an impact on their lives beyond college. Hopefully. <laughs> Without question. Yes. We're visiting here on uh, Nighthawk All Access with Bryn Seidenstricker, the Assistant Athletic Director for Student Services here at UNG. And we mentioned the fact, yes, you were a, uh, a student athlete uh, in college native of the Keystone State, yep. Hanover, PA, and uh, Shippensburg State, if memory serves? Shippensburg University. University, yep. all right, yep. very good. And field hockey, your sport of choice. <laughs> it was. Uh, my mom was a coach, and actually my, my aunts are coaches as well, so uh, we joke that I had a stick in my hand at like six months old. Um, and so it was just through that experience that it, up north, it, it is a very popular sport. Um, and my sister played, and all of my family played, and so I just got hooked and uh, had the opportunity to play collegiately and very, very grateful for that as well. And, and what a program there at Shippensburg during your time there. Uh, a phenomenal, if memory serves, 75 and 10 perhaps? <laughs> Somewhere your... around there, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. What was it like to be a part of a program with that much success? Um, it was amazing. I mean, and it's hard. People ask that question and it's, it's hard to put it in words. Uh, I came in one of 16 freshmen which is a huge recruiting class. Um, and by the time we were seniors, there were nine of us still. And so it was, I mean, we, we worked it from day one. Um, we came in and that freshman year, we made it to that national championship game and lost it one to zero. And so that just kind of lit a fire. I mean, that program under Bertie Landis saw so much success and we just, we didn't know any differently. The culture was, was there and, and that, that tradition was there. And so, freshman year to senior year we knew we had one last shot and uh, just m the group of seniors that I they're still my best friends today we're, we're very very close and it was just a moment and a season that we'll never forget to to go out on top and to win a national championship your senior year uh, you can't really ask to end your career in a better way that's pretty much the ultimate conclusion <laughs> to a career yes, <laughs> yes definitely it was uh, it was a phenomenal moment to do it in front of family and friends that had had watched that journey for so long and to do it with literally your best friends um, I blacked out a little bit people ask all the time like I really don't remember it's funny to go back and watch the film because it's just kind of mad chaos when it happens um, but yeah it 
you can't ask for more and it's it's near and dear to my heart always. That is great. Yep. <laughs> then the transition into postgraduates and uh, you wind up uh, eventually here in Dahlonega, North Georgia. What brought you to UNG? North Georgia brought me to UNG. Um, so I had an opportunity to work at the NCAA for a year after I graduated and I learned about New North Georgia through that process and through that program. Um, Lindsay Reeves and her department just, they have done a phenomenal job of putting themselves on the map. And so at the national level, we knew North Georgia. We knew what they were doing, not only with Make-A-Wish, but also you know the 2015 National Championship and, and all of the other successes between them. And so um, a prior boss of mine knew that this position was opening and just kind of alerted me to it. And just the opportunity to work for a phenomenal woman, such as Lindsay Reeves, and start an administration career um, in a department that is just doing so many awesome things. Um, couldn't have asked for a better opportunity and just couldn't say no when Lindsay offered it to me. Last question, what's been the best part of your time here at UNG? The people. I mean, it, it is, it's such a family and being a team sports student athlete and being very close to my family, family is really, really important. And even from the day I came down on my interview, it was apparent that everybody here cares about you and they care what's happening and it, it's a collaborate, you know, it's a collaboration. And so to continue that work within a team atmosphere, you can't ask for anything more. Bryn, thank you so much for what you do for athletics here at UNG. <laughs> Been a great uh, visit. We're going to continue on with uh, UNG Nighthawks All Access, our Nighthawk Spotlight, straight ahead. It takes more than intelligence and talent to succeed in life. It takes grit and a commitment to excellence. It takes the willingness to serve others and a cause greater than yourself. It requires you to push boundaries, ask difficult questions, and understand the world around you. It requires you to know your strengths and weaknesses, and have the desire to make yourself better than you were yesterday. It requires you to be independent, efficient, and tolerant. Ultimately, it requires you to be a leader. At the University of North Georgia, we develop leaders. Leaders who serve our country abroad to tackle the challenges of the world. And leaders who serve at home to improve our way of life. Leaders who never quit. Leaders who lead by example and not exception. Leaders who are tough, but fair. Leaders who are relentless and passionate. Leaders who solve problems and don't make excuses. Leaders who do the right thing, even when no one's looking. There's nothing average about the University of North Georgia and its core of cadets. If you've got what it takes, then bring it. And welcome back to Nighthawk All Access. Thanks again to Brent. Always great to visit with Brent and find out what's going on. We are joined now by a man who is the Nighthawk Spotlight, Evan Davis. Welcome. Thank you. Of course, a stalwart for men's soccer and uh, one of the seniors on the program. Talk a little bit about what you guys have going this season. Uh, so at the beginning of the season, um, we came in, I think it was 17 new guys, um, a couple transfers and then a decent bit of freshmen, including my brother. Um, and uh, we started young. Uh, we had a couple injuries in the beginning of the season. Um, didn't really start off how we wanted to. I think our record now is four, five, and one, and we lost four games in a row. Um, so it really wasn't the start we wanted to. But for the past two games, we've really been getting back to what we, uh, we need to be doing. Um, we're playing a lot better. Um, we have a two-week gap to get a little bit healthy. Um, so I'm really excited for the second half of it. Should be a lot better than the first half. Talk about having a younger brother yeah, as a member of the team. It's really cool. Um, we played together in high school. I played one year there, and I guess I'll get one year here. Um, so it's kind of cool. It's different. Um, I mean, because you're used to going back and forth all throughout life, kind of like just fighting and stuff <laughs> like that. So um, it's different. I mean, trying not to get in fights or anything up here, but it's, it's a good time. I enjoy it. Now you talked about high school playing the, the one season with your brother, of course, at Spalding. A phenomenal program, great success. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about what uh, you did on the high school level. Yeah, so we, uh, we went to the uh, semis, and uh, semis in the playoffs the first two years. Um, we lost Dalton, which they went on to win the state championship. Um, and then my last two years, uh, we weren't as good, but we still got to the lead eight, I think, either one year and then Sweet 16 the other year. 
um, and we lost to St. Pius, which they went on to win the state championship as well. So um, all four years lost to the state championships, but it was it was a good time. Enjoyed it. And I wouldn't regret it at all. And when it came time to begin evaluating where you were going to do your uh, collegiate uh, competition and academic study, what attracted you here to uh, North Georgia? Yeah, it was. Uh, it's about two hours from my house, um, so it's not too far. Um, far enough where I don't have to go home all the time, but it, but if I want to go home and see my family, like I can always easily do that as well. Um, but as far as like the school, the campus is beautiful. Um, I didn't exactly know what I wanted to do degree-wise at the time, so I knew they had like a broad um, a broad categories or anything like that for me to pick from. Um, and then I just for the soccer, like I, I, and I really liked coach and. Um, yeah, just the soccer aspect. Talk a little of it. bit about that, Coach Paris. What's it like to, to play for Coach Paris? It's great. He's a he's a great guy. Um, he's just always there for you in any aspect of your life. I mean, he always says like build great men. I mean, he really that's really what he tries to do. Um, I mean, yeah, soccer comes is very important, but like in the end, it's all about the men that we are becoming. So exactly, um, he does very well to do that, um, and he that's what he strives at. Part of uh, the, the college university experience is the academic. Uh, portion of that and I understand that uh, you're pursuing a uh, career in finance. Talk a little bit about what led you to, to that as a major. Um, so I really didn't know for a long time what I wanted to do. Uh, I think I finally just chose uh, finance my sophomore year maybe, um, but I kept trying to like, I still wasn't exactly sure when I even chose it that I wanted finance. Um, so I started taking classes and like I've always been good at math, so I was like, oh, that's something I like. Um, but yeah, I just, I really just enjoy um, the, like the numbers aspect of it honestly because right. it just comes natural to me so like that was uh, kind of what I do. I don't know what I'm going to do after college or anything like that. Um, I guess that's the come but figure out but there's time for that. Yeah yeah. <laughs> well in addition to uh, being on the, the soccer pitch and then taking care of academics to a phenomenal level. By the way congratulations on uh, your uh, academic uh, successes Thank you. recognized by the Peach Belt Conference Presidential uh, Academic Honor Roll but there's also the the opportunity for you to find a way to sort of uh, clear the uh, the mind in the outdoors big into fishing big into hunting talk about that yeah so uh, I've been I've grown up fishing my dad was a fisher um, we go a lot of fresh water and then my grandfather takes out on his boat down in uh, Panama City Florida we'll go deep sea fishing um, I've just always really loved the outdoors and then when I got to be about I think it was around like 13 or 14 um, I started hunting with my uncle because my dad doesn't hunt um, so I kind of like taught myself um, still not that good at it but I enjoy it. It's a great time. Um, just get out in the outdoors. It's beautiful. Now, is there any competition between you and your younger brother when it comes to fishing and hunting? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, he's got me beat, though, on both aspects. So he's got a bigger buck than me, and he's got a bigger bass. He caught about, a, I think it was about a 10, 12-pound bass in a uh, pond out at near our house. Um, so <laughs> I've got to get back on the uh, winning streak on that one. And Evan, as we wind down uh, this segment, and thanks again for being our Nighthawk Spotlight uh, no athlete problem. this week. Great on the uh, the pitch for soccer, great in the, the classroom for academics. What has been the best part of your experience here at North Georgia? Uh, I think it's just the relationships that I've built here. Um, I'm in a fraternity. I've met some great guys through that. Um, got, I live with four or three other guys um, that are in the fraternity. Um, I love them, like hang out with them every day. And then on the soccer side of it, um, I get to hang out with people from around the world, different countries, um, and just kind of see how we mix in the team. And those, all those uh, relationships will last a lifetime. And that, that's, I know, something that you're looking forward to, to staying in touch with those guys oh, after yeah. your time here. Oh, yeah, for sure. Maybe I'll make a couple trips across the pond. There you go. See some guys in uh, Europe. <coughs> Evan, thanks so much. Thank and you. Thanks for being our Nighthawk right. Spotlight no Athlete of the Week. Stay with us. All Access continues in just a moment. What better place to wrap up an edition of Nighthawk All Access than with the Nighthawk. Big thanks to our guest this uh, week. Of course, our tennis coach, Kent Norsworthy, our Nighthawk Spotlight Athlete of the Week, Evan Davis, and a big thanks to Bren Seidenstricker. Uh, it's been a great show. We're glad that you've joined us here on Georgia Mountain Television. Stay with us all season long right here on Nighthawk All Access. We'll see you next time.